Peter Barlas here, cardiologist. Now, today we're going to talk about heart failure and seven top and proven medicines that are used to treat heart failure. Now, heart failure is a common condition. It is most often related to blockages or diseases involving the arteries around the heart. For example, heart attacks that can cause weakening and scar tissue. But there are various other causes, and we've had a separate video earlier in this series on what are some of the causes and symptoms of heart failure. A link of this is in the description below. So if you do have reduced heart function or termed heart failure, where the heart function is unable to pump adequately. And we've talked also previously about the ejection fraction, that is the measure of the strength of the normal heart function. Well, if you have a reduction in this, there are several proven medication that are useful in controlling this condition, but also improving outcomes. Now, again, with your own individual situation, please always consult your own physician and cardiologist about which medication may be appropriate in your individual situation. Now, let's start off with a common type of medicine, and they are beta blockers. And there are specific types of beta blockers that have an action that helps not only improve symptoms, but also improves the strength of the heart contraction. And that's what the aim of controlling heart failure is, is to improve the contraction of the heart muscle to improve the amount of blood being ejected out of the heart. Well, beta blockers are a common medication that is proven to be beneficial. We know a few names, particularly of beta blockers, and they are bisoprolol, nebivalol, carvedilol, and metoprolol XR, or extended release. Now, they all finish with the uh, term olol and puts them into the class of beta blockers. And this particular type of class of beta blockers has that added benefit of improving strength of the heart function. Number two. ACE inhibitors, and they are a commonly used medicine that we use for high blood pressure, but again, they are a proven medicine that helps the strength of the heart. It helps remodeling of the heart. When the heart is recovering, for example, after a heart attack, well, this class of drug called ACE inhibitors can actually improve that function and improve symptoms. There are various types of medicines called perindopril, ramipril, trandolopril, quinopril. So ACE inhibitors are a proven benefit. Number three, angiotensin II receptor blockers or ARBs. Now we do not use ACE inhibitors and angiotensin II receptor blockers together. So it's one or the other. If ACE inhibitors are not well tolerated, and one of the common side effects is a dry cough, well then, the angiotensin II receptor blockers can be a very useful alternative that again works to lower blood pressure, but equally helps the heart muscle recover and remodel and improve the strength. That's what we are after here. A few different various names that we see here, for example, Talmasartan, Valsartan, Olmasartan, they are the Sartan drugs and they are angiotensin II receptor blockers. Mineralocorticoid diuretics, or one called spironolactone, or another one known as eplerinone. Now, these particular medicines are diuretics, so they help to remove excess fluid from the body. And that's a common presentation when somebody does have heart failure. 
fluid excessively builds up and causes many of the symptoms, including shortness of breath, swelling in the feet and the ankles and legs. Well, diuretics in particular, spironolactone, are very useful at helping to reduce the actual collection of fluid, but also have been proven to improve cardiac contraction and cardiac muscle and cardiac function. So they are an important medicine. They can cause high potassium levels, so it's very important we monitor them, particularly when they're used in combination with angiotensin II receptor blockers or ACE inhibitors, but very important that we monitor that. And in a few individuals, and we've had a separate video on this on what the effect of spironolactone is, it can cause breast tenderness and pain. Now, Evabridine is a very novel drug that works on a particular type of receptor within the heart itself to actually reduce heart contraction. So it slows the heart down, but equally has a proven benefit in improving strength of the heart. So in some situations, that may be a medicine that can be added to other medicines, such as beta blockers, particularly when the heart rate remains still somewhat elevated, and we usually look for a, a heart rate of more than 75 beats per minute that is consistent, despite the use of beta blockers that also slow down your heartbeat and the heart rate. Vabridin is a useful medicine that can also assist in improving the cardiac function. A rather novel combination drug, and you might have heard of one called Entresto. So, it's a combination medicine, including valsartan, which is an angiotensin II receptor blocker, but also another medicine called sacubitril. Now, this particular medicine, again, has more recently become available over the last uh, four to five years, and has a proven benefit that in addition to conventional medicines, when patients who were treated with this particular medicine had significantly better outcomes but also better control of symptoms. Now, it's a medicine that we do not use in combination with ACE inhibitors. So that's one clear distinction that we make. So if patients still have suboptimal heart function and they've been treated with ACE inhibitors or angiotensin II receptor blockers, well, then we would stop those classes of medicines and then replace them with this therapy. It's taken twice a day. And again, we're always cautious about it lowering blood pressure, but also keeping an eye on kidney function and starting off slowly and building up a dose that is well tolerated by the individual patient. Number seven is a rather new class of drug that we know is used particularly for diabetes, but what it does have is a significant benefit in those who also have heart failure or heart function that is reduced, known as sodium and glucose co-transporter 2 inhibitors, so SGLT2 inhibitors. And this is a class of drug that we use for diabetes to help improve blood sugar control. And this class of drug includes ones like dapagliflozin, empagliflozin, and this class of drug works on the kidneys to help lower or reduce the amount of sugar that builds up in the bloodstream. So you get increased sugar removal via the kidneys into the urine. But also there has been a very significant proven benefit that it also improves heart strength and heart function. So a very novel therapy, one that is very useful in those patients who are still inadequately controlled with their symptoms and who would benefit from having further medicines to help improve cardiac strength and contractility. So that was an overview of seven proven therapies that are used for patients with congestive cardiac failure. Not all are relevant to every individual, so always check with your own physician and cardiologist about what therapy may be the most appropriate. And we will focus on these individually over the course of the next few videos as well. Until then, Bye for now.